transfer Iona Jones Sledge, who's the transfer from Iowa State, English Jackson and Armand for the Georgia Bulldogs. Well, the points that uh, Iona scores, so those matchups will be important. But uh, yes, they had a great year last year, kind of got a new team this year. Iona coming off an 81-73 loss against Rutgers last Saturday. Georgia a 62-54 loss at Georgia Tech 11 days ago. So we'll see how rusty the Bulldogs might be having not played for nearly two weeks, been in the middle of final exams. Well, getting off to a good start is really important. Uh, Georgia's going to open in a man defense, and uh, Little Williams is going to be uh, defending the point sledge, and we'll see how, how Armand and Jones starts. Armand with the first shot of the ball game, and Iona in the black jumps on top 3 0. Not only do they jump on top, but they, they go to the, the pressure and the press of double teams after the May field goal, and that's something that uh, Georgia's going to have to deal with. Georgia needs to get down and get some easy baskets. Vincent Williams running the point for the Georgia Bulldogs. Georgia trying to replace Gerald Robinson at that position from a year ago, and that's part of their struggles offensively. They don't have that scoring that Robinson gave them last season. And there's the turnover committed by Williams. A jump ball is called. Georgia will retain possession on the possession arrow. Man, it looked like after that press that uh, Iona went to a matchup zone. Uh, a little bit of sort of matchup. Uh, it's a little bit different than, than I've seen. Uh, they're not a real big basketball team. So knowing that Georgia has not been shooting the ball well, look at this zone defense. KCP, Contavious Caldwell Pope with his first shot of the ball game. And there's Finds the guy. The bottom of the basket. Excuse me, there's the guy that uh, they're going to have to get after right there. Tavon Sledge, the point guard, the transfer from Iowa State, got a hardship waiver because of an illness in his family, so he was able to transfer without having to sit out a year, and that's the first bucket of the ball game for Sean Jackson. Well, Sean Jackson doesn't get many buckets. He's averaging two or three points a game, but uh, this is a little bit better defense. Here's the, the real good pressure by uh, Iona in the backcourt. Now let's see if they go back zone. Georgia able to negotiate the pressure, get the ball into the half court. Jurisic. Is fouled on his drive to the basket. Jurisic trying to get his game back going again. He's four for 21 his last two games. Well, they put him on the high post, sort of in a 1-3-1 one, one offensive set against this sort of matchup. Uh, he's a guy that probably needs to play inside. His percentage shooting, Matt, outside has not been very good all year long. Only shooting 20% from the three. Put him on the high post, give him a chance to drive, shoot a little bank shot inside. He got the shot off against the zone. Uh, that's probably where he'll stay inside more than, than outside tonight. Jurisic is a 73% free throw shooter. You saw his numbers on the season right at eight points and four and a half rebounds per game. Mark Fox telling us one of the problems with Nimi early in the season, settling a little bit too much on the three-point shot, as you mentioned, when not shooting it very well. Well, shot selection is something you look at. You've talked about all along about the poor shooting that George has had. And talking with Mark Fox a little bit, he felt like they've had some poor shot selection they got to try to get that corrected. Five all tie here early in the ball game. Stegman Coliseum in Athens. The jumper from A.J. English, the freshman out of Delaware. A.J. hadn't been starting. And I'll tell you one thing. If they get a wide open look on the perimeter, uh, this basketball team is going to let her fire. Yeah. fire. Well, English uh, coming off his best game, scored eight points in their loss against Rutgers. Interesting ball game, that loss against Rutgers. Coach, they were down 22 with 10 and a half to play and got it cut down to one with two to play. Well, you can see that's, that's a good point. You can see the three-point shots, the way they shoot them. Uh, it's easy to get back in ball games. Wild out-of-control shot by Vincent Williams gives Iona a chance to run. And Lamont Jones with the three-point attempt ends up in the hands of English, and he puts it in. The biggest thing you've got to do, we talked about that, is get defensive boards. You can't get this basketball team that scores 79 points a game two and three shots. That's what happened this last trip. Morris with the feed inside to Dante Williams. And there's a cheap basket that Georgia needs very, very badly. Armand dishes underneath to Jackson. Jackson had his shot rejected by Dante Williams. Jurisic on the drive. Ball stolen away, knocked out of bounds by Iona. One of his problems is he tries to create things that are not there. He needs to, he needs to settle down, get the basketball to the open people, get back to the inside. But Jurisic gets sort of gets tied up in the game so fast and tries to get shots off that are really not there. Back to the zone. Iona, three-point lead here in the first three minutes of the ballgame. 
probably from a tempo standpoint, the ball game favoring Iona right now. Well, I miscalled it. It's, it's boxing one. They're playing. They're playing Pope man to man. The rest of them zone. It's boxing one. Benson Williams, the misser on the jumper. Hey, hey. Jones right through the lane. They call him Momo. Lamont Jones, one of the top scorers in the nation, slices right through the Georgia defense that failed to get back in transition. Well, you've got to stop the ball. For all you people who are watching this basketball game tonight, kids, coaches, whatever, you've got to get the basketball stopped. And uh, Lamont took that basketball through everybody in the, uh, on the floor and laid it in. You've got to get the basketball stopped. Morris in the paint. Knocked out of bounds by Dante Williams. They call him Momo, Lamont Jones. He's just six feet tall out of Harlem. Actually started his career at Arizona. Well, you can call him Momo if you want to. <laughs> you can call him Go-Go. I don't know what he is, but he absolutely can fly with that basketball. And this is, uh, after watching this game, you know, the first five or six minutes, this is some perimeter shooting team. Very quick on the perimeter. Very difficult for uh, Georgia to defend. Well, Tim Clouse said when they stop shooting, they're in trouble, so they will keep shooting. Yeah. They only shoot when they have the ball. <laughs> Inside, they go to Ridley, back out. Long jumper, nailed by Tavon Sledge. Well, you've got to put pre more pressure on the shooter. I you know, talked about going to a zone, but I don't know who you can defend. Uh, they all shoot the basketball pretty well. Probably going to have to have a little bit more pressure on the defensive end. We've reached our first time out of the ball game. Four minutes and 18 seconds in at the Stegman Coliseum. I Occasionally, this is an I own a team this year with, as I said, with nine new players that, uh, you know, really doesn't, it's not bashful on, on, the, uh, on the offensive end. They're looking to shoot that basketball and shoot it quick. Vincent Williams in trouble. A jump ball is called, and so the possession arrow points now in favor of Iona. The one thing you have to do, Matt, if you're Georgia, you've got to get back and try to contest shots. You can't give them, they got two or three easy looks off the fast break. It didn't take the ball to the basket, Matt, but they got the jump shot out of the fast break. And that's a good time to shoot it because the defense is going back into the, the middle or back into the uh, uh, middle of the lane. Iona on a 10-2 run. Vincent Williams struggled at the point early in the ball game, so they bring in the freshman, number four, Charles Mann. And now you people that are watching this basketball game, Georgia has gone to a zone defense. And it's been a change since the out-of-bounds uh, play, uh, out-of-bounds called by Mark, zone defense by both teams. Traveling the call on Lamont Jones. Tim Kloos in his third season at Iona. Overall, his seventh season as a head coach, including his four seasons at Division II CW Post. Very successful there. Georgia needs to look to score once they break that press and take the basketball and burn Iona for, for pressing. Eight on the shot clock now for Georgia. Man, the drive. There was contact in the lane, and the foul is going to be called on Iona and Tavon Sledge. Well, you use the dribble to take up the slack. In other words, if, if the defense is back, you, you try to take up the slack with the use of the dribble, but once you get to the trees or once you get to the defense, you need to shoot the basketball right before you get there. And he did a man did a pretty good job of that just a freshman kid as you as you noted his first time to start today. And um, this is a pretty good opening, <laughs> pretty good awakening for him. Man out of uh, state champion Milton High School in the Atlanta area, averaging only two and a half points, two assists per game, 56 percent free throw shooter. And you talked about the free throw percentage before the game started. Um, Georgia struggling like a dick at 66 from the line and 80 something for uh, Iona. Seven point lead for Georgia. In the opening five minutes of this game. Matt Stewart and Wimp Sanderson with you at the Stegman Coliseum. Sort of a 3-2 three, three zone defensive look. English launches another three, and the rebound is pulled down by Cannon. John Cannon checking into the ball game, a 6'10 sophomore. Pretty much a different lineup after the timeout. I think he was a little disgusted with them and decided he'd get a different look at some different guys. Kept Pope in there. Outside of that, he, he changed the lineup. Interesting that in the first six minutes of this game, Coach, 
KCP has shot the ball only once. He made it, but that's the only time really he's touched the ball in the flow of the offense as Cannon has called for travel. Looked like they were playing boxing one. I think they were. I, looked, I couldn't tell at first. I thought it was just pure matchup, but after looking at the last trip, uh, looked like boxing one uh, on Pope for I don't know. Really, the story of this ball game, you hear it a lot in football about controlling the tempo of the game, but really, that's kind of in essence the whole storyline in this ball game. Who controls the tempo? Oh, they no. play fast, Iona wins. They slow it down, Georgia's got a chance. No doubt about it. In the corner, another three ball on the way from the English, who's knocked down two. And stolen by Jones, but he fouled Brantley over the back to do it. Well, really hadn't thought of English being that kind of three point shooter. He's already drilled two. and. And uh, a three-point basketball, a three-point ball has really been good down as thus far in this first eight minutes of the game. Well, English was only three for eight, shooting <laughs> the three ball in the first seven games. Limited play gets a start here today, and he's knocked down two in the first six and a half minutes. I am right. It is boxing one. Look over on the other side, how they're defending Pope. Everybody else is playing a 2-2 two -two zone. Well, when you look at KCP, and he shoots 30% of their field goals, over 40% of their three balls. You can understand why the defense would do that. Charles Mann loosens up the defense a little bit by knocking down a three. Oh, that's a really good look for him. I, may, I know that helps his confidence some and uh, gets him feeling good about himself. Armand. Armand's number 10 of the nation in threes per game, 3.4 a game, and he shoots 48% behind the arc as well. Dixon. Armand with the rebound. Nobody to the offensive glass. Dixon got a good look. There's nobody else there to try to get a second one. Ball lost out of bounds off of Iona. It'll be George's ball. High post is wide open in this in this type defense, especially when you're playing man on one guy. And the other the other two other four in a 2-2 two -two zone. The high post is open. Had a great look, but you got to get a second and third look. You got to get some cheap baskets, as we talked about. Georgia's lead is seven. Or rather, Iona's lead on Georgia is seven. Kenny Gaines. Inside they go. Man off the hands of Jurisic. It'll be Iona's ball. Third turnover for Georgia. The faster the, the game can be played, the better Iona likes it. They like to get up and down, shoot the quick shot, get some second and third shots, get to get to the hole on the dribble drive. And Georgia's got to come down and get themselves set a little bit and look to the high post some. The high post is open for Georgia. Iona is a team that can build a big lead quickly. They can make a comeback quickly with their style of play. And, of course, it can go the other way, too, as it did last year, last March in the NCAA tournament yeah, sure against BYU. Can. And Lamont Jones knocks down another three. And he comes up with the steal. Jones dishes to Armand. Armand underneath. Foul on a shot attempt. And Iona will be at the line with a 10-point lead when we get back. So, so far, the combination. 8-14 of the ball game. Armand at the line, shooting 68% for the season. Armand, number two in the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference, averaging 19.9 a game. And also, despite the fact he's a 6'4 guard, he's number four in the conference, 6.3 rebounds per game. Yeah, he's done a good job. They're just an athletic team and not much of an inside team at all. They don't take the ball inside much, but they're pretty athletic on the perimeter. And English nearly comes up with the steal. George is just going to have to be a lot quicker in their passes to beat this press. Well, it's a 94-foot game for Iona. They want to play baseline to baseline, and, and it's uh, been a struggle for Georgia to do that against that. 12-point lead for the Gales. First ever meeting between these two teams. Iona is 5-19 and all-time against the Southeastern Conference, but have not won a game against the league since 1985. Inside the foul on Tim Dixon, and he'll be going to the line. Well, they got at least a look at a cheap basket. Uh, Big Dixon uh, ran the floor pretty well. The long pass came to him, and, and uh, he took the basketball to the hole. That's what Georgia's got to do. I think the foul was on the floor. It was not a shooting foul, uh, Matt, but uh, look, looked like it should have been. You're right. Ball will come in underneath. Kenny Gaines, the freshman, on the inbounds.
Gaines drives. Dipsy Doodle off back. Iron followed by Dixon. Kept it alive, then dribbled it off his foot. And coach still nearly nine minutes into the game. KCP still has only one shot, and he made it. Yeah, they've got to get the basketball, too. This is, of course, the reason that uh, on his playing boxing one, they're trying to keep the ball off of him. They've done a good job. They've pretty much played him man, and uh, everybody else has gone zone. That's what a boxing one does, and they've pretty, been pretty effective. Curtis Dennis off front iron. Pope with the rebound, got it to Vincent Williams. Pope gets it back, fires on the run, and nails it. Two shots, two threes. Back the other way, Ridley the miss. Pope another rebound, gives Georgia another chance to run. If you can get Pope the shot off the break where the defense goes back into the middle of the floor. That's exactly what they were able to yeah, do last that, time. It looks sure. like that might be Georgia's best off option offensively here is to try to score in the break. They've got Lamont Jones defending him. He's, a, he's pretty quick. He's just trying to keep the ball off of him. Gaines for three. Way off the mark. Jurisic the offensive glass. Vincent Williams. Tip attempt underneath by Georgia is lost out of bounds, but apparently Iona touched it last. Got to, got to score that basket right there. Vincent's got the little jump shot in the middle there. and, and can't, They just can't make any consistent shots. And, Coach, that's one of the things that really has bothered Mark Fox about this yeah. Georgia offense. They're big men not finishing on plays. Well, they're, they're in, even even the perimeter guys have struggled a little bit. Uh, and you talked about, you made a great point when you talked about Pope not getting any shots. And I tried to make the point, too, that that they that got a little guy on him. You know, Lamont Jones is defending him when he switches it in. But uh, he's defending him. He's doing a nice job on him. Right now with this defense that Iona is running, it's going to be very difficult for Georgia to score in the half court, at least get points out of KCP in the half court. He's just not open. Inside they go, and the basket by Morris and a blocking foul on Iona. Well, good pass inside is almost a charge. I think Coach thought it was a charge, and it may have been. But uh, they, they got the basketball in there to him, and as he went up, he, he uh, sort of went into the defense, but uh, they called it for a block, so it's a good play. Ridley is the one that's called for the foul. That puts Morris on the line. Brandon Morris making his first start here today. Coach was very pleased with his effort against Georgia Tech, their last game 11 days ago, when he scored nine points, four rebounds in 19 minutes. Georgia's trying to play some freshmen now. They're trying a little bit of everything to get some scoring punch. Georgia has three freshmen that they're using and probably will use even more as the season goes on. Morris, who uh, just scored the ball. Charles Mann is out on the floor right now as a freshman as well. Long three-point attempt. Georgia got a man out there on him, but they retain possession. Jones puts it on the floor and drives through the defense. All the calls for the ball fake. You people that are watching this game today, the great ball fake there. Got the defense off their feet, and he's able to dribble drive to the basket. Use that ball fake. Gaines inside. And a blocking foul called on Iona, and it's going to be on Ridley again. Actually, they're going to call this an offensive yeah. foul this time on Gaines. Pretty good position by the defense then. Very, very difficult to defend the dribbler. These, these guys are pretty quick with the basketball. Lamont Jones is hard to defend, Matt. He, he's so quick with the basketball. The other point guards are too. And you get by with dribble drive, then you kick it off with a three. You got you got real problems defensively. There's two fouls now on Gaines. Jones again on the dribble. Very strong. He's got great body control, which makes him very good on the drive. Armand the miss. Rebound by Mann. And there's contact as man makes his way down the floor. Foul is going to be called on Iowa, and it's going to be on Dennis. But I don't know that George is not better off trying to run the thing down the floor and get some good shots off the break. You know, we talked about them playing slower, maybe wanting to play slower, but I, I think they, they don't get much when they get into the half-court set. But if they'll go on and get the basketball out, they'll get some shots on the, on, you know, some jump shots on a fast break. And you notice speed against size. Lamont Jones. 
playing against uh, poke and speed against size is pretty important as far as matching up with somebody. Charles Mann with the basket as Georgia cuts the Iona lead to six. Jones gets open on a weave. And a rebound controlled by Brantley. And Sledge knocks the ball away from Mann, but knocked it out of bounds. The more you score, the more you press, and that's exactly what Iona wants to do. They want to play this game 94 feet, if at all possible. Now when you're in a half-court defense and things are set, you need to work yourself in, get the very best shot you possibly can for your best shooter. Don't try to force anything. Work it and find what you need. They go into straight zone, and they're not, they're not well, they are playing a little bit man. Better. Inside, they dump it to Dante Williams. Across the lane, the feed to Morris in the finish. Georgia. They took their time, waited, a little bit more patient, got a much better shot, got the basketball the postman who kicked it to the other post and dumped it. So Georgia has slowly cut what was once a 12-point deficit down to four with a 10-2 run of their own. A lot of screen on the perimeter. Sledge, long rainbow three, knocks it home. Sledge having seven points a game, not a real big score for this team. Alley oop and finish on the other end by Dante Williams. Good, good cheap match. Great long pass to the backside. That's what Georgia needs is some cheap baskets, easy baskets that bring that percentage up, make them feel better about themselves. So Georgia actually, as you pointed out a few moments ago, went starting to increase the tempo themselves, seeing that might be their better option. I think it is. I think just going ahead and playing a little bit faster with this team is, is the way to go. They just got to defend better. Got to contest shots. It's a five-point lead for Iona with six and a half to play in the half. Sledge, kick out, Ridley inside the arc, and he knocks down the jumper. You know, the important thing for people that are watching this game, the dribble is so important, Matt. When you dribble in, when you... Seven-point game. Iona leading 30-23 with six minutes to play. Iona, eight of their 30 coming off of Georgia turnovers. Mark Fox looking for the Bulldogs to play a full 40 minutes. He felt like they played a good 32 against number one Indiana, 36 against UCLA, but not a full 40. Another steal for Iona. Jones saves it and gets a foul called on him. A charging foul on Lamont Jones, and that'll be his second. Very poor call. There's no way that was a charge, but uh, certainly... It, uh, the defense is, is moving, not set. And I thought uh, Lamont did a good job of getting by. Great athletic move by Jones to save it, get it back. But he gets called for the charge as we reach timeout with 5.54 to play in the half. Hold him out the rest of this uh, rest of this half. You think they'll keep him out for five minutes? Uh, they might. The average is about 36 minutes per, uh, per ball game. So we'll see. That'll be a big decision for uh, Tim Clues to make. Less than 10 on the shot clock. KCP still with just two shots taken in this game. Down to three on the clock. Jurisic has to launch. And the rebound is controlled by Ridley. Not a great shot on the other end, but a uh, pretty good defensive effort by, by uh, Iona. They do a nice job with their with their defense. They play really hard with the matchup, and they, and they, um, they really cover all the areas. Coach, KCP averages 15 shots a game. He has two yeah. in the first 15 minutes, and he's hit both of them. Armand, the miss on the three, and Pope grabs the rebound. Pope's also a very good rebounder, number 14 in the SEC. Well, what you have to do there is screen for him. Uh, that's not good for the best shot right there. 20%. Good, good job. That's what Jordan's got to do. Let's go off the miss 
shot. So that is Dante Williams' best shot, the follow slam, and then he gets back on the other end to alter the shot. So Georgia, chance to cut it below five here. After a couple of big plays by Dante Williams, inside the hill again. And Tim Plus wants a timeout after watching Dante Williams have consecutive slams and make a big defensive play on the other end. Well, we had some fronty there. But he's been able to get some of those cheap shots that you were talking about early on that George has so struggled mightily to get so far this season. Alley-oop on the other side and intercepted by Jurisic. Georgia a chance to take the lead with a three. Instead, they cut it to one with a layup by Gaines. Good fast break trip. Good job by Williams. Get the basketball down to the backside. Easy shot. Bulldogs have trailed by as much as 12 in this game. Have never led. Little weave out front, and they have to weave the ball. They turned it over. Chance for Georgia to lead. Gains to the hole. Got the layup, and Georgia has the lead. I think you're going to find some spots for these freshmen to play for Georgia in the month of January. Pope the rebound. And remember what Tim Kluse told us, when they don't shoot, they're in trouble, and they're having trouble finding the bottom of the net right now. Bad pass by Jurisic leads to an Iona break, and Armand had it swiped away, but apparently KCP stepped on the baseline after knocking that ball away and had the ball in his hand. So a turnover for Georgia after turning well, Iona. 3.24 to play in the half. Georgia on top for the first time in this game. Blizzard's been pretty good for Georgia, apparently, yeah. because they've got 31 yeah. and a half. The most they've scored in a half this season has I, been 34. Yeah, I think they're better off playing like a dirt road lizard. Well, the more frenetic it has been, it seems like the better for Georgia as they force another turnover. Their big guys can run. They need to get it down the floor and get something easy because they, they're, not, they're not getting much against this set. Georgia leading for the first time in this game. Took the lead on the game's layup. And now Dante Williams banks, or bags another, I should say. He's got 10 in the first half, or they, above his yeah. per game average. They need for him to play well. He hasn't really done what he's capable of doing. He's a long, lanky guy. I had a bunch of guys sort of like that at Alabama, and I like the way he the way he looks and the way he runs. He just needs to play a little bit better. Now, what has Georgia done defensively to mix things up on Iona? Well, yeah, they played the zone for a while, but they've done a little bit better job of defending the dribbler. And, and uh, actually, Iona's kind of gotten out of sync a little bit themselves. They're kind of a little bit wild. Five on the shot clock, the drive by English, and a foul is going to be called on Georgia. They're going to first look to dribble drive the ball, talking about Iona, and get whatever they can get off of the dribble drive. And then if, if the dribble drive is not there, then they're going to try to kick the basketball to somebody for the three. This is the way that they play. They are not an inside oriented team where they pass the ball inside, Matt. They dribble it inside, but they don't pass it inside. And there's a huge difference. There's not a postman in there for them to throw it to. But they create a post play by, by the dribble. English at the line. He two for two on his free throws coming into the game. So he hasn't been to the line a whole lot this season. Foul was called on Jurisic, and that's his first. Georgia now with five or make that three team fouls. Pardon me, seven team fouls on Iona. Georgia already working in the bonus. Well, Georgia's made a good comeback. We'll see what this, what this pressure and press continues to, to hurt Georgia. Long pass stolen away. Bad decision by Vincent Williams to try to get the ball all the way across the court. Gomez gets it to Lamont Jones. Jones got his man in the air. That's a great veteran move by oh, Lamont sure it Jones. Is. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a ball fake or a head fake, and, and the foul comes. Calls. You know, I, Georgia has to take the basketball to the basket on the long. You have to burn the press. You have to burn the press. Here's your, here's your ball fake, head fake, foul. But uh, the last trip down the floor, you got, you know, you've got to burn it, but you've also got to use your head. Your pass can be so long that the defense can run through the gaps and get it. And that's what happened on the last, last trip down the floor. The pass is way, way too long. Jones with seven points here tonight. He's number two in the Metro Atlantic Conference, 87.5% from the free throw line. Coming off a 26-point performance in their loss at 
to Rutgers in Madison Square Garden last Saturday night. You know, you realize those two scores uh, last Saturday night were 18 for 18 from the free throw line. And Jones just does a fabulous job. Came into the season, into this ball game this season, 42 for 48 at the free throw line. 48 of their 127, so nearly a third, actually a little bit more than a third of their free throws he has taken. Drive by Morris, and Morris is called for traveling. Got up with the basketball and had him, didn't have any place to dribble again and picked up both pivot feet. This is a this this team is very quick on the perimeter. These kids are, are quick. You know, we talked about them having nine new players off an of NCAA team of last year. But, uh, they've got really good good quickness and they handle the ball very quickly. English turns around and puts Iona back in the lead. English has been a little bit surprised to me, Matt. He hadn't been that good all year. Well, he's matched his career high here in the first half. He had eight against Rutgers on Saturday, and he's got eight here in the first half against Georgia tonight. Stick around. Coming up at halftime, we'll send you back to our network studios in Atlanta. Plus, we'll update you on the other scores around the SEC as Jurisic dribbles it off his foot. He tried to do something with it. Oh, and a there. block by KCP. Ahead for Georgia and KCP misses his first attempt at the ball game. He's now two for three from the floor. Lamont Jones and KCP the rebound. Not many people on the offensive glass for Iona. De uh, Georgia did a good job defensively. They swarmed and got that the basketball out of there quick. If they can just get something here to against this. Oh, me. Jurisic way off the mark. I'm telling you right now, he is. He will kill you. His decisions with the ball and his jump shots he's will getting, absolutely kill you. And he's getting the stare down from Mark Fox right now, who has not broken his case yet. Oh, he is my. upset with Jurisic. Oh, my heavens. He's shooting 20%, jacking up his shot with nobody ready to play. And then when he gets the ball inside, he tries to create something that's not there. Less than 10 and a half. English has had the hot hand. Rebound, KCP. Half court at the buzzer. Well, how about efficiency for KCP? We started the game by talking about K but one three one, or they, they go, end up going to a little matchup and going through and switching off every time. Play, they're playing boxing one, I guess. George in the white, Iona in the black. They're determined to cut, cut down on Pope's looks, and he, he hadn't had many. Stolen away by Lamont Jones. Jurisic had his pocket pick. Bounce past the sledge in the layup, and Iona back in the lead. Well, George has turned it over about as many times as anybody on the squad. I, it's just a struggle for him today. Georgia needs to work and do a lot of screening, get what they can get. Brandon Morris, Dante Williams misses the tip. Rolled off the rim, last touch by apparently by Iona. Brandon Morris is going to be a good player for Georgia. Six, seven kids, pretty athletic. Sort of reminds you a little bit of, of Pope. Uh, no, probably doesn't shoot quite as well. Foul on the inbounds. In fact, Mark Fox calls Brandon Morris the most physically gifted player he has on his team. I think these freshmen who are on, on Georgia's squad now playing a little bit more today than we've seen them play in the, in the uh, season thus far. And Georgia's had... A couple of pretty good basketball games. You pointed out Indiana and UCLA and, and um, you know, lost those two games, but they were in the games pretty much all the way. I think you're going to see these freshmen getting a lot more playing time. You know, the conference starts uh, somewhere around the 7th, 8th of January, and it's going to be a, a very interesting league. Jurisic. It's one of the two free throws. He has three points here tonight, Wimp. He has four turnovers. 
You mentioned Georgia's and the SEC schedule gone to the 18 game schedule this year for the first time since 1964. Georgia will not have home and home appearances against Kentucky and Vanderbilt as Armand hits the three pointer. Eighteen game schedule is what they used to have when I was doing it. It's it's a little bit different than they've been with the sixteen, even though it's just two games different, it's gonna be different for them. Jurisic got his man in the air, missed the banker. And last touch by Georgia. Iona the early two point lead here, a little bit less than two minutes into the second half. Iona on a two game losing streak lost to St. Peter's then lost to Rutgers This is the first time they've had a two game losing streak since the uh, early portion of the 2010 season. Also the last time they were un under 500. Both these teams are very similar in the size kids that they have and what they try to do. More, both of them are more perimeter play teams and not so much inside English the miss Morris the rebound foul is going to be called away from the ball and it's going to be on Georgia and Dante Williams. No post no post play has really been established uh, as I noted a minute ago. I only likes to get the ball inside with a dribble drive but uh, as far as passing in there and then kicking it out they, they don't do much of that. Mark Fox really anxious for his big men to do a, a better job of getting in good position to get the ball and then for his perimeter players to do a better job of getting them the ball. Sledge on the drive and the layup. That's something that can't happen. You can't, you can't take an uncont uncontested half court layup shot. Somebody's got to be there to help and go charge here. He just simply gets by the defense and has gone to the other end. The help's late. And it gets so late that it uh, it foul. If you're going to foul him, you need to make sure he doesn't make the basket. It's got there way, way too late. You ha I'm going to tell you something. For everybody that's watching this game today, you and you're trying to teach basketball, you must teach your kids to defend the dribbler. They must guard the basketball. It's so, and the young, it's such an important aspect of the game. Dante Williams meantime goes to the bench after picking up his third foul and he has been Georgia's most consistent inside presence. So we'll see how Georgia fares with him on the bench inside to go to Jurisic. It's stolen away by Jackson and then Georgia and Jackson and Georgia one of their guards. I can't even tell who actually it's Dixon not one of their guards one of their big men the 6 9 post Tim Dixon down on the floor battling for the ball and they, he won't give it up. Possession arrow pointing in favor of Iona. A lot of contact for no foul. One way or the other. Jurisic goes to the bench. Yeah, I think it's I think it's a good move, my coach. He, he's just had a really tough three minutes here. He's provided Georgia their only point of the second half on a free throw. You always look for how your team is going to start at the beginning of, of each half. And Iona's gotten off to a pretty good start to start the game and decently to, to start the, the second half. Trying to get it inside to Sean Jackson. Jackson working against Dixon. Spin move and off back iron and Dixon the rebound. Well, Jackson's supposed to be their postman, but as I said earlier, he doesn't he score many. He got a quick basket to start the game, but he's uh, they don't really have that kind of post presence with him. Well, they thought they would have that this year. There are three guys that they thought they might have this year, and they do not have any of them. Morris off iron, Dixon the tip of tip. And Armand the rebound for Iona stolen by man and man takes it right to the hole had a shot blocked by English but there's a foul on the play. Well that's where you got to go up and score that ball. I know the foul occurred. It may not have been possible. He shot the gap did a good job of shooting the gap. But uh, when you shoot the gap you got to go in and score it. You don't have to, you don't have to dunk it. You can just lay it against the glass. Although it may not have been possible there because the guy fouled him but. 
The one thing that kids don't understand is the backboard is your friend. It's the best friends you got. Man gets the free throw. Both of Georgia's points have come at the free throw line here in the opening 341 of the second half. Career high seven points now for Charles Mann. This game's going right down to the wire. Two point lead for Iona. As I mentioned, and a whistle, a foul is going to be called on Georgia away from the ball. Kenny Gaines. Yeah, had a perimeter screen there, and, and um, defensive by uh, Georgia is playing with their hands. That's three now on Gaines. That'll get him out of the ball game as Sherrard Brantley checks in for him. What I was talking about, Iona down three big men, actually down four men. They lost, tragically, Mike Haynes, one of their yeah. recruits. He was murdered in Chicago over the summer. And then also, Grant Ellis, a wing player, has battled mono. He will probably end up redshirting this year. Sledge, long rainbow three attempt, rebound by Mann. Then David Lowry, they will get him eligible next weekend. He's a 6'8 sophomore forward. Man in the paint gets the bucket. First field goal for Georgia in the half, and it ties the score at 41. Big screen set by Jackson, leveled man. Man made a good pass on that last trip. He saw the, or he got the, got a good pass. I mean, on that last trip down the floor, he, he passed and cut. Jones on the move, misses the shot and the rebound by Georgia. They have a chance to reclaim the lead. Georgia one for six shooting to start the second half. Only basket by man and then three free throws. But still a chance to have the lead here by the first time out of the half. In the paint. Morris was fouled. He'll be at the line for two when we get back. So the game has grinded a little bit here to start this second half so forth but it's been a little bit of a grind thus far and neither team getting a whole lot done mark fox described his team offensively as immature so far this season settling too much on jump shots we've seen in this ball game when they have been able to go inside to dante williams who right now is on the bench with three fouls when they've been able to go inside to him they've been effective well, they got to get the right guy shooting the ball. I think if you, you know if you get something off the break, or if you can get the ball to the basket off the fast break, you must get some easy baskets in the game of basketball to, to be successful. You got to get some, and you got to keep your opponent from getting big in. Georgia with six points in the half, one field goal, and four free throws. They have a one-point lead. Alley oop. Sledge, it was behind him. Yeah, it's a good screen the screener play. Man to the corner. KCP drives and missed the dunk. And the follow, however, is by Morris. If you're going to dunk it, you got to make it. Or have someone there to pick up your trash and That's put it right. in the can for you. Exactly right. That last play by Iona was a, something they worked on at the half. I mean, at the uh, timeout, not working on it, but a play they ran. And they screened the screener. Take a look at the last sequence there here. There it is First, right there. There's your screen, the screener. Was, the pass was, was errant, but uh, it was certainly a good play after a timeout. And Brandon Morris was able to complete what KCP could not finish, and Georgia has a three-point lead. I just hate trying to throw a lob pass to Sledge. He's only 5-6. <laughs> I thought he was he was going to be able to finish it though had they put the pass on the money. And a shot clock violation as Iona falls asleep. They lose sight of the shot clock there on the inbounds. And I quite frankly lost sight of it too. Well, I'll be honest with you, I don't think that happens very often to them. They're usually <laughs> looking ready to crank it up and shoot it, but uh point guard's responsibility to be sure that uh, they know where it but time and score is, and they didn't do it. Everybody forgot about the shot clock after the ball went out of bounds after the shot, but they had never touched the rim.
I like this man kid. He's going to be a good player for them. They get it to Morris, and Morris with the layup. The defense parted like the Red Sea for him. Well, it did because the high post is open all the time in, in uh, their defense and an opportunity to get the ball to the high post. Georgia's got a five-point lead. It's their largest advantage of the ball game. KCP gets the ball in the corner. Morris, dish pass to Dixon, who puts it in. Georgia up seven, Tim Kloos wants a timeout. Georgia on an 11-0 run. The Bulldogs start to assert themselves after a slow start here in the second half, and now they have their biggest lead of the game. Seven, a new career high established here tonight, which is 10. Lamont Jones driving and forces it in. Great shot by Lamont Jones. Defense all over him. Made a really great play. And back the other way. An offensive foul. They called on Vincent Williams. Wow. Deshaun Gomez got in front of him. Established position. And Georgia gives the ball right back. Yeah, they said he sort of pushed off there and probably did. See if Lamont Jones is able to kind of take control of this ball game for Iona. Drives again and shoots and banks it in. He is so strong around the basket. Yeah, Vincent Williams has a very difficult time defending him. That's who's matched against him, and uh, he's a hard match. You can see the value of a veteran player like Lamont Jones. Uh, you fall behind by seven. You immediately go to him on consecutive possessions down the floor, and he cuts it down to three. Well, he got a real contested layup shot the on time before last and made a good shot again. So he's... Georgia throws it away. Gomez working against Vincent Williams. Hey! Leaves it for Amon. Got the layup and was fouled. Well, you, you can't let a guy just lay it in right there. You've got to foul him to the point that he doesn't get a three-point play out of it. You're going to see a part of the substitute there for, for Vincent Williams probably coming out. Yep, he is. Coming out of there and freshman kids coming back in. I, I think the man kid has got uh, some really good potential here. He's he's not he's pretty heady and he doesn't try to overdo things. And how about the pass by Gomez here? Armand at the line, a chance to tie the game, which he does. So Iona has responded after falling behind by seven. They go to their salty veterans. Lamont Jones and Armand to tie the game, and a foul is going to be called in the backcourt on Armand. Well, the one thing that you, you don't want to do is put the basketball in the corner against the pressure. Georgia got in the corner, and uh, but they got out of it, and foul occurred. 11.58 to play. Iona and Georgia. It's in by his ball game at 48 all. Spin move. Gaines had a shot blocked from behind. And it is saved in the corner to Jurisic. KCP still only five shot attempts in the game. He's hit three of them, including the half quarter, as Jurisic misses another three. Hard for me to understand that. And the basket by Armand gives Iona a three-point lead. Dante Williams lost the ball running into Sean Jackson. And foul will be called on Sean Jackson. Sean Jackson got there late. Good pass to the inside. He gets there a little bit late and the block's called. Let's see what we've got here. I don't know if we have a shooting foul or I think we have a shoot. Uh, let's see. And Pat Adams is going to step in and, and say that it was a shooting foul. So that'll put Dante Williams at the line. One place that Georgia struggles some. 66% from the line. Dante Williams only three for seven at the line for the season. Two points off of his season high. They felt like the guy that called the foul didn't, didn't call it shooting. The guy out front here at 10 second line ran in and said it was a shooting foul. Dante Williams, one more free throw. 
Jurisic goes to the bench again. Been a very uneven night. Most of it on the low end for Jurisic tonight as Dante Williams hits the free throw and cuts it to one. Lamont Jones swish pass inside to Jackson. What a pass by. Yeah, what a pass. Exactly right. It's a pass off the dribble. Most of the time you don't encourage that, but he flipped that basketball in there right in the middle of the of the defense. Really great. He's a very athletic kid. Inside they go to Brandon Morris. Had his shot blocked by Jackson. And Iona comes up with it. Armand gets it ahead to Jones. Jones back to Armand. Now Jackson working against Dante Williams. Out on the perimeter, Armand, rainbow three. KCP the rebound for Georgia. Georgia looking to get it inside. If you'll take your time, they can get something. They do a pretty good job of that in the last, uh-oh, uh four or five tips. Georgia turns the ball over. No, they're going to say that Iona touched it. So Georgia is still working with 12 seconds on the shot clock, and a foul is going to be called on Iona as they bodied up KCP on the drive. Well, they did body him up. KCP got by on the dribble drive, and defense got there late. Coach is upset, felt like the ball wasn't touched, should have been a backcourt violation. I'm not sure. Gains to the bench for Georgia. Sherrod Brantley checks in for him. That's, this Iona team is very difficult to play. They're, they've got good quickness outside. They put the ball on the floor well, and it's not, uh, it's not easy to defend them. Five team fouls, both teams. Morris working against a double team, tried to force it through, and Iona comes away with it. Not a whole lot there. Maybe a foul. Lamont Jones launching over KCP and drains it as Iona back up six. Very garden city. He shot that from downtown Atlanta. You know, Iona lost two big time stars of last year's 25 win team and Mike Glover and Scott Machado, who was the conference player of the year. Well, yeah. I think they've replaced him with these two guys. I think they have too. I'll tell you right now, this, this Lamont Jones. He this, might be the yeah. player of the year in the conference. You can't. Can't defend that guy. He's tough. <laughs> he kind of he kind of pointed to the crowd when he made that three and got them all worked up. Well, he's impressed me tonight. Yeah, that's for sure. Too. He is quick. KCP with the free throw to make it a 56-51 game. KCP now 10 points, so he's scored in double figures in every game so far this season. In fact, he has led Georgia in scoring in every game so far this season. Uh, 2.9 threes per game. He's already hit more than that today. They, they, excuse me, they got Diggs in there now. I couldn't pronounce his name, so they said his name is Diggs, so that's what I'm going to call him. You're referring to number 32, <laughs> Diggs McCoybu. I asked him why they were warming up how to pronounce his name in case he played. And he came over and told me, but he didn't tell me Diggs. SID in, told me Diggs, and I thanked him. Yeah, in Diggacy <laughs> is his given name. They just call him Diggs. <laughs> Thank you, Diggs. Drive and a shot block. KCP blocked that shot, turns into a turnover for Iona. Iona's lead is four. Just under nine to play. Man on the drive and a blocking foul on Iona. Man on a dribble drive. The, the help occurred and the help got there late. No doubt about it. Good call. Man's going to the line. As you stated uh, at the beginning of the game, this is the first time he started a game. A freshman kid from here in the state of Georgia has a chance to be uh, a little bit different kind of player than Vincent Williams is. Vincent may be a little bit quicker, but a little bit smaller, but this kid uh, has a chance to be pretty good. The more he plays, the better he's going to get. Man with 10 points here tonight. Hey, hey. 
But no doubt the point guard of the future for the Bulldogs, a 6 4 point guard. Probably to this point, uh, Mark Fox says, thought he was maybe overthinking the game a little bit too much. Had a lot of speed last year in Robinson, as you know. You know, he, he graduated. He was a very, very quick kid. He's not as quick as he is, as he was. Robinson, their leading score, 14 and a half points per game a year ago. Lamont Jones fires over KCP, got knocked out on the play, or fell down on the play. Brantley for three, rolled out on him. Sledge to Armand. Armand actually is the best three-point shooter they have percentage-wise. Dennis. Rebound controlled by Georgia. Under eight to play. KCP pulls up over Sledge. And knocked out of bounds by Morris. Seven minutes and 48 seconds to play at the Stegman Coliseum, Iona, leading Georgia. Has beaten Florida State, so um, that would be a game Alabama be, be, yet, be ready to play in, need to be ready to play in. Here in Athens, Georgia, Iona with a three-point lead in the ball. Always trying to run a play after a timeout. Stolen away by KCP. Tavius Caldwell Pope hit a half court shot at the buzzer that gave Georgia a one point advantage at the break. We've been close ever since. At one point, Iona led by 12 early in the game. And Georgia has led by as much as seven. Morris spin move, missed it. Shot may have been affected from behind. Morris stays with it. Tip in by Pope. Morris not bad on the block down there. He gets a little bit too far on the baseline. Didn't have any backboard. You got to, you got to stay a little bit higher, not so not so far below the block because when you're below the block, there's no backboard there, and the backboard is your friend and as far as banking the ball in and getting an easier shot. Georgia within one. English had 11 in the first half. Has yet to score here in the second. That's a new career high for him. Jones on the drive, draws the foul on Dante Williams, and that'll be number four on the big guy. I tell you, this kid is quicker than a hiccup. He can really, can really get through with the basketball. He's very, very hard to defend. If he gets by you, he's going to get something. And, you know, he shoots a three-point shot as well, so you can't, you can't cover him by crowding him too much. If you do a dribble drive on him, you can't, you can't not contest him to shoot the three. So kids like that are double hard to guard. Jones was 16, five below his per game average. He's now three for three at the line tonight. All Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference second team a year ago. News for the uh, Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference today. They've added two new teams as of yesterday. They voted in Quinnipiac and Monmouth to start and will join the conference in uh, July. I tell you, these conferences are changing so much. I can't keep up with them, Matt. Never. Yeah, I, I've gotten to the point where I'm just like, y'all just let me know when you're finished. Yeah, that's right. It's, I can't keep up uh, in progress. It's confusing. Just let me know when you're done. Ahead to Gaines. Gaines on the drive, ran right into the defense. This will be a foul on Iona. And Jackson. Took the ball to the hole. Defense got there late. Two shot foul. Four fouls now on Sean Jackson. Tim Kloos has had consecutive 20 win seasons with the Gales. Well, Georgia's been the two, you know, opportunity to shoot two. Starting with the next next free throw, and I don't know it's a long way from that. It's gonna be big. Two misses for Georgia at the line. Bulldogs now 13 of 19 at the stripe tonight. This 
fun to watch this kid go. Yes, it is fun to watch You're, him go. You never. You just wonder what he's going to do next. Exactly right. Sledge, there he is. He's going to launch from there if you're not careful. Instead, he's going to put it on the floor and drive to the hole and get the basket. That's, you know, when, he, when he shoots the, the good three, you get a pair on him and crowd him. He dribble drives. If he's not helpful on the backside, you got problems. I tell you what, I'd pay to watch that kid play. Nearly came up with the steal right there. KCP on the drive. Got the basket and a foul as well. Here you see Lamar, they, they they got pretty tight on him, tried to, and when he did, they he took advantage of him and got the easy one. You know, he's got some, you know, Tim Kloos feels like he's got some pro potential because he's so strong in the lane. He's, right. so, he, he's a small guy, he's six feet, but he plays much bigger than that because of the strength with which he uh, is able to handle the ball and finish the play. You can't you can't find anything. Substitution, no substitution for quickness with the ball. Well, he's got some quickness with the basketball. Contavious Caldwell Pope completes the three point play. He has Georgia back to within two with five and a half to play. Here he goes again. Look at this a three ball off back iron this time. Georgia put two men in his face. He's got the freedom of the lead way to shoot anytime he wants to. He and Armand. Those are the two big guys for them. Wouldn't you? Oh, sure. <laughs> I would. Man on the drive. Nice maneuver by the freshman, Charles Mann. Weaving through the defense. The game is tied at 60. They try and do everything they can to defend. KCP on the break and the jam. The reason for that was great defense on Lamont Jones. They kept the ball off of him and they made an errant pass. But uh, you gotta you gotta really talk about the good job that Georgia did defensively then. Georgia in the lead. Lamont Jones trying to answer, misses the layup. KCP lands hard on his shoulder and still has not yet gotten up and Pat Adams blows the whistle. Corner. Well, this is a, a break for Iona because Georgia's best players over on the bench right now. But the Bulldogs do have a two point lead. And Dixon in trouble. Did he get the timeout? He did. Or actually Mark Fox did over on the bench. Probably a pretty good timeout right there. That looked like he was about to get trapped to lose possession of the ball. So KCP, let's see if he's ready to check back in just yet. They, he's got two pieces of gauze stuff, stuffed up both nostrils here. Now, how can you play like that? Oh, uh, you can. I think that they'll take those out and play him. I don't know whether they'll play him this trip or not, but they'll be back in there probably before the game's over. Can Georgia win this game without him the final four minutes? Well, I think they can. I don't know if they will or not, but they can. They, uh... You sent Kent Davison, the uh, director of basketball operations there, pointing to KCP. But apparently he is not yet ready to come back in. Or maybe he is. Yeah, Mark Fox is going to get him back in the ball game at the next uh, timeout. But I think the next timeout, next dead ball is going to be a media timeout. So I'll get him a little extra rest. A little bit different look for uh, I thought only in the straight man. I mean, straight zone, excuse me. Tracking. Morris, the spin move and the layup by Brendan Morris, Georgia's freshman. Have you? Yeah. As you have pointed out, when but really probably have been their biggest game of the season thus far. Well, they got by the travel then, there's no doubt about it. They moved both pivot feet. Three ball on its way. The miss by English. Georgia up by four. Sledge on the dribble. Approaching three minutes to play in regulation. To the corner. And the three ball by English. 14 now for English, new career high for the freshman. 
And that makes you got to be able to breathe out of one side, yeah, right? Right. Well, 306, and we still have a timeout to come here at the under four media timeout. So that's still in the back pocket there, and both teams have two timeouts remaining. Ahead to Dante Williams. Boy, I'd hate to go to Ion and play these guys. Well, no, I, Coach, I have to correct you. He's got both um, both Boy, nostrils. Okay. Gauze up both nostrils here. Maybe he decided not to breathe. Breathing through his mouth. Man puts it on the floor and drives. And the tip in by Dante Williams. Georgia up three. Good position move. Good tip in by Dante. He's uh, playing much better. Lamont Jones missed the layup. There is a case of getting by the defense, but just being a little bit too wild and not being able to use the glass. Georgia a chance to go up by two possessions here with a basket. Two minutes to play. Man. Off the iron, Brandon Morris got the rebound, tried to finish, had a shot blocked. Tried to dunk it, had no glass. Armand, rebound off the hands of English, and now we finally have a timeout with 1.41 to play. Georgia up by three as Mark Fox continues to plead his case for a foul that will not come. Pies, man with 13, and Morris with 12. KCP has 18, including the half-court shot uh, at the buzzer in the first half that uh, right now is the difference in the ball game mathematically. This is a big trip right here. Georgia's going to either get a cheap one or an easy basket, or they're going to throw it away. Inside, they look to Dante Williams, down to 10 on the shot clock now. Brandon Morris fouled on the shot attempt. He'll go to the line. Got the ball pretty well to Morris down on the block. I talked about him getting a little bit too deep. He's uh, got some pretty good looks down there. And He'll get a timeout. Deshaun Jackson has fouled out of the ball game for Iona. So their biggest inside presence is now going to be on the bench. Well, you got a freshman going to the line who hadn't really had a whole lot of attempts. He's but two for three in this ball yeah, game. He's a uh, young man who hadn't got a whole lot of playing time, but he has a chance to get some when the conference starts in December, in, excuse me, January. Well, win or lose for Georgia, I think they take away from this ball game, Wimp, as they get ready to gear up for conference play in January. They've got some freshmen here, in particular, Brandon Morris and, and Charles Mann. Who are probably going to help them in league play? Yeah, I think so. I think uh, this has been a good game for them because it's given them a lot of opportunity to play, and and they play pretty well. Morris with 12 points and five rebounds, and there's Mann with 13 points and five rebounds, and Morris with a critical miss right there. See Mark Fox and right over his left shoulder, Georgia Bulldogs athletics director Greg McGarity. Two big misses and leaves the door open for Iona. It's still a one possession game. Well, those are those are huge right there, no doubt about it. Had a little bit too much uh, thrust on it. One shot to that side. There's Lamont Jones to the corner. Armand with the three ball. And the game is tied. What a shot. Jones got the ball. He knew who to get the basketball to. He, he gets it to the other score. Oh, Mar, you probably will get a timeout. Yep, you did get a timeout. Uh, All right, Georgia's ball tie game 66 66 27 on the shot clock for the Bulldogs. You want to get a good look without without uh, without forcing the basketball too quick. Almost got a trap. KCP slashes through the lane. Battle for the rebound. Dante Williams, a tip of tip by Georgia, comes back out. Bulldogs have it, and the shot clock is off. Now Georgia's, you shoot the last one. Now Georgia, you shoot the last one. Georgia can play for the last shot. That's right. Big, big offensive board. Now you shoot the last one. 
Don't shoot it too quick. KCP forces it up there. Dante Williams tip attempt. Kept it alive on the boards and last touched by Georgia. And now Iona will have the last shot if they want it. That's got to be a last shot situation right there. Cannot shoot that four shot right there with 27 seconds on the clock. You got to can't do that. So Iona a chance to win the game here with 13 and a half seconds. Sledge gets it across half court and calls timeout. Okay, let's take, let's take what you do in this situation. 2.7 of regulation, game tied at 66. The Florida 8A state championship game coming up immediately following the conclusion of this game here in Athens. Going to shoot it about five or six on the clock. He sure is waiting long. No, he's not waiting too long. He's going to set the screen for Sledge. Four to English. English behind the back, launches, and we're going to overtime. Matt Stewart and Coach Wim Sanderson with you. George in the white, Iona in the black as we start our extra five minutes. The foul's going to be called on Sledge. Tavon Sledge picks up his third personal foul. They jarred the bar, ball loose with a pretty good double team, kind of a, a late whistle, but uh, the whistle was there, and I think he probably did foul him in the double team situation. They're trying to cause a turnover and continue to play as fast as they can. Georgia is in the double bonus. And Iona not yet in the bonus. The next Georgia foul puts the Gales in the one and one. And I'm going to tell you something, that's, that's quite a difference. Georgia sitting there with a the double bonus, and, and uh, Iona not even in the bonus yet. Next foul they will be. Georgia's two freshmen, yeah, Morris struggled. and Mann, have missed their last three free throws. And I wanted to talk about that. You take a look at the difference, the youngsters for Georgia, Morris and Mann miss now three big free throws here yep. at the end of regulation and in the start of overtime. And you see the, the veterans for Iona and what they were able to do to get, uh, get the game tied. So Mann gets one, Georgia leads by one. Long way to go now. Lamont Jones working off the screen has to give it up. They're switching a lot. They're trying to get they kind of switching on uh, on the mark. They got a bigger Brandon Morris guarding him now trying to get some length out there so he can't launch those threes. English instead has an open three and Kansas. I don't know where he's come from. Wow. He's got 17 in this game. His previous career high eight against Rutgers a week ago. Iona up two. Dixon inside. Deep time. Well, that's a good low, good pass to the low post to the low baseline, and, and Dixon made a good cut. Jurish did a good job of getting the ball. English again. This time the rebound by Mann got knocked down by Wrigley, Ridley rather, and uh, Mann will go to the line again. Ridley picks up his second foul. Georgia with the opportunity, two free throws. It's huge. This is a huge opportunity for them. They missed uh, three out of the last four, which would have pretty much salted the game away. It was before the overtime. Iona is the fourth NCAA tournament team from last season that Georgia's played here in their first nine games as Mann misses another four free throw misses by Morris and Mann here in the closing seconds of regulation in the opening minutes of overtime. All around big game, best game certainly so far for Charles Mann in his young career. Wow, another miss by Georgia's freshman. Boy, it's unbelievable right there. That's five. That's uh, that's five misses. Five misses plus a foul. <laughs> and the foul puts puts uh, Ion in one and one. So <laughs> big play right there. You talk about a big play. Big. So your man Diggs gets to go to the free throw line where he has not had an attempt this season. Yeah, I don't know if Diggs can make one or not, but he's got uh, he's got his name straightened out because I couldn't pronounce it. Well. He had a 
harrowing experience earlier this season. He was stricken by a flesh-eating disease that really? he lost 30 pounds. He was in the hospital for a while, and it was touch and go. I'm glad to see him able to play. This is just the second game he has played in this season. His first action came last Saturday, played six minutes against Rutgers. Man on the drive and a foul, a blocking foul is going to be called on Ridley, and that's going to be number three on him. Well, we got the circle there now, but uh, anytime a guy switches off like that, it's going to be an automatic block. That's that's a rule in the game. Somebody out of the zone or guarding somebody else help man came in. It's wow. Unbelievable. Six misses for the Georgia Bulldogs. Four now for man, two by Morris. They're, uh, they're two freshmen who have really, both of them had the best game so far of their careers at Georgia, have uh, come up lacking here at the free throw line late in the game. That's just, that's just, uh, well, that's tough. And man finally gets one in there. And Georgia leads by one again. Two out of seven or something. Georgia with 12 total misses at the free throw line in this ballgame. Lamont Jones puts Iona back in the lead. He's got a little something something going yeah, on with does. the crowd behind he does. us because he, he hit that shot and cut him a glance. <laughs> Morris spin move tripped and fell down. No foul was called. Turnover for Georgia. He's left handed. He tried to make a spin move after he took the basketball to the left and spin back, and he couldn't handle it with his right hand, and he travels. Wasn't a whole lot there. Sledge on the drive. Shot blocked by Dante Williams. Sledge very, very quick with the ball. The one thing he can do is dribble drive and get the ball to the guys for the three, but he had an opportunity to score there. Good block by, by Georgia. Iona still has the ball, brings it in on the baseline. 17 on the shot clock and ticking. Under two and a half to play in this first overtime. Jones, kick out to Sledge. Sledge slicing Ridley open at the foul line. And Iona has a three-point lead again. That's it. Dribble drive and kick back. Dribble drive and kick back. KCP hammered by Ridley going to the line. Ridley now has four fouls. Three of them have come here in the closing. Minutes of regulation and overtime. I was just fixed to say it's going to be a huge trip for Georgia. And, and KP did a nice job of getting the basketball down to basket. And, of course, these free throws are huge for them. Well, KCP, Contavious Caldwell-Pope, is Georgia's leading free throw shooter at 78%. i tell you what, when you, when you reached, go to the, yeah, when you It's go reached to the, epidemic proportions yeah. for Georgia. When you go the goal 15 feet, you know, Nobody guarding. You can't make one. He got tough. Wow. And they got another foul to reach over by Georgia. And, you know, the, the thing that's killing them is that the, the, the missed free throws. He's um, hit yeah. free throws. Season. He didn't drill it. He front ironed it. Sure so did. apparently uh, it's spreading. It's in the water or the air, one or the other. Yeah, he's 68% free throw shooting. Not as good as I thought. It was Jones who, sh who shoots a little better. Three-point lead for Iona. Less than two to play here in this first overtime. Man drives and hits the floater off the glass. And a foul is going to be called. A blocking foul on Iona. So Larry Mann a chance to go to the line, redeem himself to complete a three-point play. Here's your dribble drive. Good move, a really good move here. 
Defense gets there late. And Ridley was called for the foul, and that's number five on him. So now two of their big men. Ridley fouls out following after Sean Jackson, who fouled out at the end of regulation or late in regulation. Well, I, I keep say. saying this, but it's so big to have the bonus opportunity. You know, if you miss the first, you get another one. And, and um, I own still still two free throws away from getting that. Charles Mann at the line, a chance to tie the game. Mann is six for 12 at the free throw line tonight. But an outstanding performance of 17 and seven completes the three point play. We're tied at 73. Ninety seconds left in the first overtime. Got a freshman kid defending Jones. Jones the drive. <laughs> probably got a probably had a travel there. He's got 24. Iona up two. He was so quick he couldn't hit it. <laughs> too quick for the refs to pick up the shuffle of the feet. Dante Williams fouled by Lamont Jones that time. And Jones now has three fouls. Well, I'll tell you what, Georgia's done a much better job of posting their guy low and getting the ball inside. I don't think I don't think that Iona has much of a defensive post presence inside. And, uh, Dante's had a better basketball game and he's uh, been having and they've done a good job of trying to get the ball down to the block area. Dante Williams is two for two at the line. Wow. Georgia now with 14 misses. 17 makes and 14 misses tonight. Well, all these stick out too in this, you know, in these last part of the game. Georgia down one. One minute, one minute, one minute, one minute. Clock ticks under a minute to play. Lamont Jones. Off front iron, Morris the rebound for Georgia. Bulldogs come down the floor, a chance to grab the lead. Gaines left open for the shot and buries it. Georgia up by one. Great shot. They'll get a timeout, I guarantee you, by Iona. Uh, Gaines looked at the face. I'm not in their huddle, so I don't know. That's probably what's going to happen. I don't think that they're going to let down the last shot unless they can't get something prior to the clock run out. Yeah. Lamont Jones kicks to the corner. And the basket by Dennis. Curtis Dennis shoots Iona into the lead with 20 seconds. That was his first basket of the ball game. Man back the other way. Rebound, Dante Williams and a foul underneath. And Williams will go to the line with 12 seconds. Well, you take a shot out of the corner by a guy who had made many threes. He knocks it home. You think you're in decent shape, but when you get back, Georgia, Georgia kept their composure, got the basketball back, down the floor, and, and they got the shot on the glass, and Dante is going to the line. So here's where you block out. Of course, it's going to be two free throws. But um, the best they can have probably is a score tied. Well, not anymore. Unless you miss here and get the rebound. Yeah. Wow. 15 misses for Georgia at the free throw line. Had they made one right there. The basketball inbounds to your best free throw shooter, Matt. So it's going to be a one-point game. That's a one-point game. Get to your best free throw shooter. That would be Lamont Jones. He's tied up in the corner by Gaines and a timeout called by Tim Flush over on the other end as he got the timeout from the bench. Ten seconds left. Maybe he's the best passer. Gets it into Lamont Jones. Jones gets fouled by Gaines in the backcourt. So Jones will go to the line for the uh, one and one here. He is four for four at the free throw line. He is the only player on either ball club coach that has not missed a free throw tonight. Well, 
I'm, I'm a little bit surprised at the best free throw shooter threw the ball in bounds, but uh, no, Jones is an 87 and a half percent. Oh, right. Jones shooter. is okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're right. I had Jones him mixed up. You're exactly right. So that's what I did. But correct, the best free throw shooter caught the ball, which I thought was a smart thing to do. And Armand threw it in. You're right. So Jones at the line. Two-point lead for Iona. You're exactly right. I had Armand as the best free throw shooter. And it's Jones. Well, actually, Trey Bowman is yeah. their best free throw shooter. He is uh, 21 of 23, but he's not on the floor right now. Jones is the best guy they got out there on the floor. Well, Jones will be our MVP if for some reason uh, I want to win. Missed and it. he misses it. It's a two-point game. Ahead to Jurisic. Jurisic is fouled by Armand and hit his head. I believe on the bleachers. I'll tell you one thing. You got to give Georgia a lot of credit for getting that basketball down the floor. Well, he didn't hit his head on the bleachers, but I heard a, a thud. He hit his head on something hard over there. There was a big thud as he hit the floor. And absolutely, we talk about we talk about the misses that Georgia's had on the free throw line, Matt. You know all the all the misses they've had. This miss right here by Jones was an absolute killer. The game's pretty much is over if he makes that free throw. Jurisic is a 73% free throw shooter. He's at the line with Georgia needing two free throws to tie. He's three for four tonight. One point game. We're fixing to go to another overtime. Well, there are no timeouts remaining for either ball club. Jurisic for the tie. He left it short, and the rebound grabbed by Iona. Pull the string on it. Georgia, Absolutely. Absolutely. On it. and if that's la if that is the last miss by Georgia tonight, they will finish the night with 16 misses. Boy, what a tough, tough. 17 misses. Pardon me. Nobody hates it any more than he did. You you'll see that. I want to put everybody back. Georgia, 20 of 37 at the foul line tonight. And if they do not win this game, and it doesn't look like they no. will unless Armand misses some free throws here, Georgia is going to kick themselves for a horrendous free throw shooting night. Yeah, they really are. It's uh, Armand Killer for two. Killer form. Georgia is still going to get a chance, even if Armand gets this free throw, they're going to have a chance to inbound and have 2.6 seconds. Remember their last three-point bucket in this game was the half-court shot by KCP at the end of the first half. And does he have another one? They give it to him. Oh, no. Launches at the buzzer, and Iona has defeated.